Hello everyone. Welcome back to Logic Medico. Today's interesting topic is dilator pupillae. So what is this dilator pupillae muscle? Let's see this. Before this, if you are new to my channel, kindly consider subscribing to our channel and don't forget to press the thumbs up button because in the end you may forget to press that. Kindly share this video with your family and friends and share the knowledge too. So welcome back to the topic dilator pupillae. It is a muscle present within the eyeball. So where exactly it's present in the eyeball? This is the optic now, which is in the posterior part of the eyeball. This is the eyeball, anterior part, this is the cornea. Here is the lens, ciliary body. And from the ciliary body, there is one curtain, which is called the iris or the iris diaphragm. So this iris anteriorly, it's visible like this. It has got an aperture called like pupil, which will dilate and constrict to regulate the amount of light entering the eyeball. So this muscle dilator pupillae is located within this iris. So dilator pupillae will be dealt under the following heading location, origin, insertion, nerve supply and action. Just now I told you the location dilator pupillae is located within the iris or the iris diaphragm. Coming to the origin and insertion which is very simple this peripheral margin of the iris is the origin the central margin or the pupillary margin so it begins from the periphery of the iris goes towards the pupillary margin of the iris that is an insertion so this muscle is arranged like a spokes of a wheel within the iris it is arranged like a spokes of a wheel so what can be the action is, is it like this constriction of the pupil it narrows or it will Enlarge the pupil like this. Just think. The muscle is like this. It takes origin from the periphery of the iris, goes towards the center of the iris, towards the pupillary margin. So if it contracts, the muscle will shorten. So thereby, this pupil will, this is the correct action, pupil will dilate. So coming to the nerve supply. The lateral grey horn of the T1, first thoracic spinal segment, will the neurons will go and relay in this ganglion superior cervical sympathetic ganglion in the neck this belongs to sympathetic nervous system from the superior cervical sympathetic ganglia the post ganglionic fibers will wind around the internal carotid artery as the periarterial sympathetic plexus this internal carotid artery will enter the cranial cavity it will pass through the carotid canal to reach the cranial cavity there it gives off one nerve instead of nerves it's called as long ciliary nerves these long ciliary nerves pierces the sclera of the eye around the optic nerve and travels just beneath the sclera to reach the iris and supply this muscle called as dilator pupillae. Just have to remember lateral grey horn of T1 segment of the spinal cord will come and relay in the superior cervical sympathetic ganglia. Post ganglionic fibers from the superior cervical sympathetic ganglia winds around the internal carotid artery as a sympathetic nerve plexus. And once it has reached the cranial cavity, it will give long ciliary nerves that will go around the optic nerve, pierces the sclera to reach the destination that is the iris and thereby help, supplies this dilator pupillae muscle. Dilator pupillae muscle. So at least one word you can remember, sympathetic nervous system controls dilator pupillae. This sympathetic nervous system, when it controls dilator pupillae, activation of sympathetic nervous system will help in dilatation of the pupil. So it will cause dilatation of the pupil. The medical word for the dilatation of the pupil is midriasis. So this sympathetic nervous system causing dilatation of pupil or the midriasis, this particular action. Do you know when the sympathetic nervous system will get activated? Whenever you are in fear, fright, flight, whenever you are anxious, nervous, that time the sympathetic nervous system there will be over activity. So, whenever you are in conversation with some person, if their pupil is dilating, that means they are trying to, they are getting anger. So, we have to stop conversation. There is a dilatation of their pupil. That is a cue or a clue which is given to you. So, dilatation of pupil or midriasis is a sign of sympathetic nervous system activation in a person's body. Also, this happens whenever there is a reduced amount of light, especially in the night time or the evening time. Okay, when there is dawn, that time, when there is a decreased amount of light, pupil tends to dilate so that you can see more clearly because more amount of light will enter your 
i so that you can see precisely so this also happens during less peripheral bright light it doesn't happen in normal sunlight it happens in evening time or very early morning time so that you can see more clearly that is also possible that is a function of dilator pupilla so in summary dilator pupilla location is within the iris diaphragm so origin from the periphery of the iris insertion to the center of the iris to the pupillary margin action it causes dilatation of the pupil from the neutral position it will dilate the neutral position it will dilate the pupil like this so now supply sympathetic nervous system if you tell it's good enough to be more precise superior cervical sympathetic ganglia post ganglion fibers peri arterial sympathetic nerve plexus from around the internal carotid artery then it forms long ciliary nerves pierces the sclera and passes beneath the sclera to reach the iris and supply the dilator pupil action dilatation of the pupil also called as dilatation of pupil is also called as midriasis kindly subscribe to our channel don't forget to press the thumbs up button showing that you like this video share this video with your family and friends thank you for learning the dilator pupillae muscle from logic medico